Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Nichols and today I want to show you how to set up a simple distillation to purify some red wine. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare my heat source. As organic solvents tend to be flammable, it's not a good idea to use a Bunsen burner. One alternative is a heating mantle, which is that white circular piece of equipment that I'm using. You can connect that to a wire and connect that to a variac, which is the blue piece of equipment, and the variac then plugs into the wall. You can then change the settings to whatever is recommended, and that reduces the voltage coming out of the, the wall. And that then preheats the heating mantle and set that aside. The next thing I do is put the liquid to be distilled into a round bottom flask. Here I'm gonna use red wine. So I'll just pour some in. And next I'm gonna add some boiling stones. Boiling stones are little pieces of rock that ensure that your boiling is gonna happen controllably, that you're not gonna get bumps. And bumps just mean like little bubbles that just erupt really violently and uncontrollably and unexpectedly. So it ensures a smooth controlled boil. And you just add a few of them. And this, the flask would then be connected to a clamp on a ring stand. And this is really important that you clamp this correctly. You don't wanna use little, uh, little plastic clips to connect it. Um, at this point, that flask should be solidly connected to the ring stand. And now we're gonna start arranging our distillation apparatus. First comes a three-way adapter, and next is gonna be a thermometer adapter. That glass piece, first you fit a little rubber piece over it, and then that's gonna hold the thermometer. And just push it delicately through. And that goes on the top. You wanna adjust the thermometer so that the bulb is at the right hand turn of the three-way adapter. You don't want it to be too high because it has to register the vapors as they make a right hand turn. Okay, so next we'll get our condenser ready. And the condensers have to have um, hoses connected to them. And the hoses are pretty hard to get on just as is, but if you wet them with a bit of water, that provides a little bit of uh, slip slippage so that it's much easier to twist on the hoses when, when they're slightly wet on the edges. So you wet them a bit and then you can twist them on. And do that before you connect it to the whole apparatus. It's so much easier when that condenser is not connected yet. All right, and now we're starting to connect the whole thing. So this is probably one of the trickier parts because you wanna connect that condenser to the three-way adapter, but it's really hard to get all the angles correct. So normally what I do is I put it in a clamp on a second ring stand, and then I leave that somewhat loose and then try to adjust everything, you know, jostle it around. Once I get the angle somewhat right, then I use a little plastic cat clamp, clamp or clip to really hold it onto the three-way adapter and then adjust it a little bit more on the, the ring stands to solidify everything. My goal is to have the thermometer completely vertical. So you do want it to, to look nice. Once you've got the angles correctly correct, then you can clamp, clamp it down and, and make it a little more, more secure. And everything probably takes a little bit more uh, adjusting. All right, then we're then gonna follow it up with, on the end is gonna be a vacuum adapter and you just can secure those with the little plastic clips or uh, keck clamps. And finally, um, we're gonna have a uh, receiving flask. Sometimes this can be instead a, a graduated cylinder collect to collect something. Sometimes you put a ice bath afterwards, but something to collect the distillate. All right, now I'm connecting the hoses. So the bottom hose, the one closer to the vacuum adapter, that one has to go to the faucet. You want water to go in the bottom. It's gonna go up against gravity and go out the top, the one that's more to the left. So the one on the right should be connected to the faucet. The one on the left is gonna be the exit hose. 
and you just make sure that that hose is actually pointing out towards the sink. Give it one more check, make sure that everything is secure, that it doesn't feel loose, and then you can start heating the sample. So I can lower the ring clamp platform and bring in my preheated heating mantle, then raise the plat platform to surround the liquid and start heating it. And if it has been preheated, then it shouldn't take too long until it, it um, comes to a boil. But once we are heating it, it is important to um, start having water running through the condenser. So you're gonna turn on the faucet, turn it slowly at first, um, if you just crank it, then it's likely that those hoses are going to pop off. So start slowly and then make sure some water is going through the condenser. It goes in through the bottom, out through the top, and drains into the sink. So let's skip a chunk of time and say that after a while it started to boil. So even when you see boiling, you may not see that the temperature is rising very much. It may still be near room temperature. And the reason for that is that you've got to remember that the thermometer is registering the vapors wherever the thermometer is located, which is not in the boiling liquid. So you're not going to get a temperature spike until vapors surround that thermometer bulb. Do you notice how now they're starting to surround it a lot more? I bet if we check the thermometer, we're going to see the temperature rising. Yep, so once there's hot gas around the thermometer, then you'll see a spike in temperature. So that hot gas is trapped near the thermometer. It has nowhere else to go. So what happens is eventually it has to turn right. And so if you look past the yellow clip, eventually we're going to see it start to get wet. And that's when it's going to start condensing to the right. Aha, there it is. There's my first drop. So that is a liquid, or that had been boiled, and then it condensed. And you can see that drip uh, falling down the, the condenser. And so it's making its way to the right toward the receiving flask. Now a lot of stuff is starting to happen. A lot of condensation is happening. If we go off to the right, see what's happening in the receiving flask, you'll notice we have some drips. So that's our distillate. Notice it's clear. Well, that's interesting. We started with a red wine, but we ended up uh, distilling something clear. The temperature right now is a little over 80 degrees. The boiling point of ethanol or alcohol is 78 and so the distillate that you're collecting probably has water and alcohol in it. You normally distill at a temperature between the two boiling points of the material you're collecting. But our distillate has a lot of alcohol in it and the red wine has been purified through distillation.